Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff Mixing Course. This course is 15 lessons long, and in these 15 lessons, you will learn to mix a whole track from start to end using only Ableton Live's own stock devices. What you will learn is a mixing workflow that works for any type of genre and any type of song, the key concepts of mixing, awesome techniques, and ways to apply the Ableton Live stock devices into your mix, as well as some fun tips and tricks. While watching this course, you can actually practice and do exactly what I'm doing in the videos using a song that I have created just for this course. You can download the stems and Ableton Live practice session from the link down below. No previous mixing experience needed. I will explain everything to you and you can get started with your mixing. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every single time I post a new video for this course. Let's get started with mixing. <laughs> okay, so this episode is about automation in mixing. Automation is very necessary in mixing for many, many, many ways for volume, for FX, for everything. So in this, we're gonna go through all that. And also I just wanna thank you, this mixing course sponsor, DistroKid, which is amazing, amazing, amazing distribution company that I personally use to publish all my music through. Just a couple of weeks ago, I published some of my own music through DistroKid and I used some of their really cool features to promote it before the launch and after the launch. So in the end of this video, I'm showing you some of my favorite tools that I use through distro kid now let's get into this tutorial yes we shall shall we yes we shall let's get into this oh my god welcome to the episode 13 of this mixing course you all are so amazing i love you oh we've done so much stuff and now we're gonna be automating things because automation is a great thing just generally, it's great. In this whole course, I've been talking so much about space and depth and width and everything. And we can create that using automation. If you don't know too much about automation in Ableton Live, I have a full video telling the technicalities of arrangement view automation as well as clip automation. So, there's plenty of ways of using automation in mixing. When we are thinking about the room that is in front of us, that we talked about the whole thing, whole course, things need to be close, things need to be far, things are high, things are low, things are wide, left and right. That kind of rhymed. Automation is what we can then use to place things around the room. So we can move example things more left or more right, during it, so people are maybe moving on the stage, on in the room while we are listening to the song. What we could do is use this utility thing even more. So let's go to the piano and keys group track and we're gonna add a utility there. So one good way is that in the group track, we're gonna automate the beginning to open up very fast from mono to stereo do that's a fun way of just being creative with mixing so what we can do here is we're on a group track and then we go utility and stereo width which is this and what i can do is the first bar here we can go from zero which is mono there full stereo width there we go so we have mono to 100 percent let's listen to that mono Another way of doing this is example vocals. Vocals could sound very good, when, especially when we are going to the last points where we want a lot and lots of like a choiry sound. So we can go to the vocal track, add a utility there, and from 100% we're going to go to wide this up. There we go, and 100%, and we're gonna open it up, not too much, but a little bit, all the way to the end. And then we go to the last point, and it's much... So 
but the strings are very in the middle right now. Oh, I need to pick my classes. I want them to be bigger, or much bigger. And therefore, what I can do is add a utility. Okay, so let's add the utility and we're gonna spread them around. So when the strings come in, they're massively big. Another way is instead of just keeping it automated 400 all the time, we can go to the right corner, activate the automation mode. I click the width so that I have it on the strings channel, utility stereo width, and I start from 100%. And now when the strings are playing, it will spread. So there is a movement while the, uh, the last chorus is happening. That's a very cool way of creating a space and movement into the mix. So I'm gonna do that in both areas, but on the other one, I'm gonna actually start from 100 and about 160. Starts from the middle. Starts to spread. now and bigger it gets wider and wider so it sounds bigger and that's the final note and it's really wide and for this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Click here is the C, and what that C is, is the same as this pan control here. And what I can do here is now go to the automation, and I can go to click the C, so we are now mixer track panning. So we are automating the track panning. And what I can do is actually, well, the first hit is completely on the right, and the le next, left, uh, next two hits are on the left. These are on the right, and that's on the left. So we can draw these in. So that's now on the right ear, we get the plong. Dun dun. Okay. And that's on the right ear again. Adjust the volume. So sometimes we want to, in mixing, want to exaggerate a certain parts that, like, example, when we go to choruses, uh, the vocals, we want it to come out a little bit more. So we could activate the automation area there. And then there's, example, this part where the vocals go to the chorus. You give me I need to make sure that I have mixer and track volume selected on the there. And I'm gonna go here and just draw a little bump, just a tiny bit in here. Meeple. So this part actually here. Meeple. So it just has a little bit. Whoa. That kind of little things can really make a difference, especially in vocals when we are going into choruses or we have something very important that needs to be said. So let's go to the low end here. So this is a really fun way of just creating additional pumping like rhythm into it. It's a really subtle uh, tip, but it really works. So we have this doom. Dun 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 so what we can do is take the pen uh, tool and we can start to draw a little tiny steps. We can actually go here and just select the right bars. So yeah, eight, one eighth is good. So we can have a little steps every time this, uh, the snare comes in like this. And I can just copy paste these, duplicate these envelopes like this. So I highlight the area and press command D. And now we have that dun, tsh, 
hit and when it comes in it kind of exaggerates everything also the hi-hats otherwise we could just put the uh, snare volume up but now we can actually just like exaggerate that whole moment so it's also the kick we have a kick hi-hat and snare on that bar It just adds that extra pump into it. And this is the one way I also like using this a lot in um, uh, mastering as well. Otherwise, I would recommend definitely using automation on all these kind of effects like reverbs, delays, choruses. So when we go to the example vocal track, we have a lot of different effects here, like the chorus. So I would use the automation here. So again, automate, session open. And from here, I'm gonna select the dry wet of the chorus ensemble. And I'm gonna just use this to, like from the beginning, I want it to be a bit more in the verse like that and when it goes to the chorus we're going to reduce it a little bit what i would do is especially in the end parts see example do i need a little bit of delay to kind of transition from one part me so also what we can do is add more reverb generally to all the tracks in the end bit where we want it maybe to grow a little bit bigger and more powerful so we can add that as well so which ones so example the vocal two this one is very reverby so what i can go here select the reverb there we go and i can just maybe go over the halfway and just reduce it a little bit in the beginning and what closer we go to the end it just grows and we could do it the same here so we go here reverb and there we go so what closer we go to the end the more the reverb grows definitely play around with the automation with fx so that it's not like monotone from start to end all the fx are just the same amount it will definitely add more uh, interest, more authenticity and everything into your mix and very good to go very like one track by track, check them out and see that you have enough of everything and not too much. <laughs> Next lesson, we're going to finish, start finishing our track. We're going to look at the volume adjustments and how much is enough vocals? How much is this? How much is that? We're going to look at all that and all your questions will be answered. Okay, so I want to just quickly talk about DistroKid. So DistroKid is a distribution company, but also it does so many other things that really help you as a musician. This is something that I experienced now when I was uh, releasing my song, No, I'll Do It. <laughs> I just always like saying that. One of them is the fact that I can sync my lyrics. So you know, like in Instagram or uh, TikTok and stuff, you have those sync lyrics. So you can actually do it here. Okay, mine is already there. Okay, and then what we can do is go sync them. So in this page, you can then sync these lyrics into the song so that they are playing in the right part. Some of the other really cool things that you can do in DistroKid after you uploaded it and you're getting ready for your release is example promo cards. It actually creates these automatically for you. So look at this. So it creates these in right sizes or mini videos. So we can actually get these here for your branding. Pick a song. No, I'll do it. Generate mini video. There we go. Look So I can just download it and share it on my socials. Also, this is one of my favorite things, DistroKid Upstream. So basically what this does is that you can get direct contact with labels. It privately shares your music, your streaming stats and contact info with major labels. Yeah, so I can just go here. Yes, labels hit me up. There, 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 there we go. Uh, all these major labels can contact me if they're interested in working with me. Uh, there's so many different other features. Spotify Canvas to make that kind of moving images. Send credits to the stores. Get YouTube official artist channel using DistroKid. You can make a music video using Vizzy. This one here. Honestly, recommending so much and check out the link down below for all of this. Go and check it out from the link down below.
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post. Usually I always post all my Patreon followers here, but in this mixing course, I am now thanking all my Patreons in the info box down below. If you want to be part of that family where I do weekly live stream Q and A's, I give feedback, I give free stuff, presets and templates. If you want to be part of that all and amazing community, then please check out the link also down below. Also, remember, I have merch, so check that out as well down below. Have a very lovely day and I'll see you next Sunday because I post every single Sunday. Bye!